I finally got my hands on the XF1024 f4 mark ii lens thanks to fujifilm australia so now i can do a comparison between the mark ii and the mark one hey guys hermit here welcome back to my channel today i want to do a comparison between the xf1024 f4 mark ii lens versus the mark one and help you decide which lens is right for you. At first glance, both lenses look identical to one another. However, the truth is, even though the Mark II shares some of its components and inheritance from the Mark I, the Mark II is quite a lot different. The newer Mark II lens is a lot lighter than the original Mark I, actually 25 grams lighter. Now, the chassis and the design is overall similar, so I wonder where they shaved the 25 grams off this particular lens. But for me, when I picked this lens up for the very first time, I did notice a considerable difference in weight in comparison to the Mark I. Now, many people bagged the original Mark I for its poorly designed exterior buttons, um, that they were flimsy and they would move and switch positions while you were moving the lens around in your bag or carrying it and so forth. I've never had that problem, frankly. Um, the buttons are quite firm in their design and their rigidness, so you really have to put an effort to switch the individual button from its one position to the other. The only problem I've had with this particular lens is that this aperture ring is an infinite spinning aperture ring and it is too soft for my liking. The problem I've had is when I have this lens mounted on my camera and I'm carrying this over my shoulder while carrying the lens aperture would move as it would rub against the jacket or the trousers or anything. This is too soft. So this uh, would move and that was the only complaint I had this particular lens. So I'd have to check before I started shooting that my aperture was set correctly on my, on my camera. Now the Mark II addresses some of these aperture ring related concerns. The aperture ring is firmer. You have the demarcations on the lens from f22 all the way to f4. And in order to move this to aperture auto priority, you have to depress this button and then turn that particular um, aperture ring. Once locked, it will not move back to any fixed aperture setting on its own, um, having knocked it around while in use. Uh, it's a locking mechanism. So now it's in A priority, auto mode, uh, it's not going to change. Uh, the other thing is that to bring it back to manual aperture, you press the button and move it to the desired aperture. Now it's free to move within the range of 22 and F4. The ring is much firmer in this particular design as opposed to the old Mark I. That's an improvement. The additional improvement on the Mark II is that this lens is now weather resistant. This means that it can withstand the elements much better than the original Mark I, which wasn't a weather resistant lens. Now, although I have put it through its paces in different environments, and it's fine, it's fine for most use. Uh, obviously, if you take it out in heavy drenching rain, probably the Mark II would struggle as well, because as the WR stands, the name means weather resistant, not weather proof, right? So weather resistant means that it can withstand a bit of moisture, a bit of rain, a bit of dust, and it will last longer. The internal optics of both of these lenses are pretty much identical. They have improved the image stabilization in the Mark II by one stop. So it's a total image stabilization rating of 3.5 stops as opposed to 2.5 stops on the original Mark I. So this will come in handy when you're shooting in low light and night conditions uh, without a tripod. The other thing to note, which is common in both of these lenses actually, is the front element of this particular lens moves in and out as you zoom from 10 to 24 and back. Uh, it does not protrude outside the body of the lens. So if I zoom now, you will see that nothing pops out outside the exterior element. So installing filters on this particular lens is perfect. It's not going to cause any problems if you want to install filters um, of any kind, circular or more squarish with the filter holder. The field of view of both these lenses is pretty much identical between the 10 and the 24 ranges. There's no change in that. Uh, so what you will capture with this Mark I is the same what you will capture with the Mark II. Now image quality. This is something a lot of people have um, reviewed and indicated that the Mark II is definitely better. 
Uh, for me, I'm not much of a pixel peeper. So for me, if it looks good on print, it looks good on screen, that is good enough for me. However, if you're interested in reviewing the pixel level and aperture level sharpness of this particular lens over the other, I'll put a link down in the description to other videos that provide you that information. But frankly, I'm not too fussed about that. So overall, I think adding the weather sealing in this particular lens to make it weather resistant is perfect. Uh, it's a great improvement, especially for landscape photographers who will be using this lens quite a lot uh, and battling external elements. Additionally, the one stop of stabilization that has been improved in the Mark II will make it great for low light conditions and allow you to get better, sharper shots without having to use a tripod. Reduction in weight is always a great improvement. The Mark II is 25 grams lighter than the original Mark I. Therefore, having that extra weight uh, without compromise on the build quality, the added image stabilization improvement and weather sealing makes the Mark II a much more attractive lens than the Mark I. Now you might be able to get some good secondhand deals on the Mark I, but if you're in the market for a brand new lens, definitely check out and consider the Mark II as opposed to going over and getting a secondhand Mark I. I mean, weight was one of the reasons why I moved to the Fujifilm system. I was tired of carrying the heavy Canon glass and bodies. Um, so having a, yet again a lighter lens to carry is a plus for me. All right, so that's it for this video. Hope that helped decide which lens is right for you in the way you're going to use this particular lens. If you got any questions, leave them down in the comments below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, let me know why in the comments. And I'll see you back here with more videos on this channel, guys. Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell before you go. Take care. Bye-bye.